We designed a visualization system to enable a comparative study of computational fluid dynamics simulations in centrifugal pumps. This system combined algorithmic detection of vortices with perceptually tuned visualizations to enable both a time-summarized overview comparison and time-step-by-time-step -time -step study of individual data. To understand the behavior of rotating stalls caused by the separation of flow from the rotor blade in the centrifugal pump, we optimized the visualizations to enable the viewer to answer these questions. Where do vortices appear? What is the structure, position, and axis of rotation of the vortices? And how do they move relative to the rotor blades? How and where do the vortices produced by one simulation differ from those produced by the others? The paper describes how we extracted vortices from the datasets. In this video, we show a time-lapse comparison of the vortices extracted from the SAS simulation, colored in yellow, the SST simulation, colored in red, and the DES simulation, colored in greenish-blue. To provide the ability to compare vortex locations from two or more simulations over time, we developed a ribbon summarization technique that displays the entire time series in one image with minimal geometry. The timeline path of the vortex cores produced by the SST simulation is visualized using ribbons. Each ribbon's center moves from the initial time step through the final time step, tracking a single vortex. The local surface normal of the ribbon is aligned with the vortex core direction, and its length is proportional to the distance between vortex cores at adjacent time steps. The ribbons are colored from light pink to dark red, marking vortex cores appearing early in the simulation to vortex cores appearing late in the simulation. Here we add the ribbon summary for DES colored from light greenish blue to dark blue. We can see that the basic distribution of vortex in the two simulations is similar. Now we add the ribbons from the SAS simulation colored in light yellow to dark yellow. Overall, the three simulations cover predominantly similar regions. Here we see that the SST vortex cores cover most of the rotor blade segment at the top, while the SAS vortex cores cover most of the rotor blade segment to the right. To analyze a single dataset, we take advantage of the larger empty space to introduce cone glyphs. Each cone marks the position and orientation of a vortex core and the size of the cone is scaled by the vortex radius. We use very thin ribbons to connect vortex cores. Each ribbon's center moves from the initial time step, colored in green, through the final time step, colored in red, tracking a single vortex. Here we see the visualization for the DES simulation. Simulation. Some regions have a lot of cones connected with ribbons, indicating that these vortex cores appear near each other in consecutive time steps. We also see isolated cones that are not connected with ribbons. These are vortices that appear for a single time step and disappear in the next time step. To support comprehension of time-varying vortex behavior in a single simulation, we combined the display of streamlines seeded at the rotor blades with display of algorithmically derived vortex cores. The paper describes the particular algorithm we used to locate vortices, but the technique will work with any vortex identification algorithm. We optimized the number of streamlines to enable a viewer using stereo to see through to both other streamlines and the vortex core identifiers while still being able to comprehend the overall flow. In this video, vortices are shown as tubes of streamlines colored by relative velocity magnitude from bright green for regions with low velocity to red for regions with high velocity. A slight luminance variation between the red and green was included to account for color blindness. The rotor blades and interface are shown in semi-transparent gray to provide context. Yellow arrows mark the position and direction of the vortex cores that we computed. The arrow sizes are scaled by the vortex radius. We added very thin streamlines colored in translucent white to provide a comprehensive understanding of the flow structure around the rotor blades and vortices. The streamlines flow from the inner edges of the rotor blades towards the outer edges with increasing separation of flow. 
in the outer parts of the rotor, flow becomes more laminar. The vortices consist of very different orientations, sometimes quite near to each other. Some are small vortices oriented sideways sticking to the inner edge of the rotor blades, while others traverse large regions of the space over time. Some vortices are compact, while others are large amorphous structures. We can also see that there are large regions with no vortices. In this video, we color the vortices and vortex cores by the log of winding angle, allowing us to distinguish tightly wound vortices from the larger, less tightly wound vortices. The arrows represent vortex cores. Here, the right vortex starts deforming and separating into sections with varying winding angles. Now, the right vortex merges with the left vortex. At this point, the two original vortices form a single large amorphous vortex. Then the vortex starts shrinking. We developed a vortex visualization workbench to assist investigation of the complex structures created by CFD simulations in centrifugal pumps. This workbench is built primarily on open source platforms, Paraview, VRPN, and VTK. This workbench can be used to analyze datasets from the SST, SAS, and DES simulations. Here, we see the user wearing a highball head tracker and NVIDIA 3D vision stereo glasses. The workbench renders a perspective-corrected viewpoint based on the user's head position as tracked by the head tracker. Complicated flow structures can be better understood with the aid of kinetic depth perception, which is provided by the perspective-corrected rendering and the stereo depth perception, which is provided by the stereo depth cubes. We implemented a three degrees of freedom stream tracer seeding with the Phantom Omni device for interactive investigation of three-dimensional CFD flow structures. Using the Phantom Omni device stylus, seen here controlling the spherical cursor on the screen, the user is able to control the stream tracer seat position along the z-axis of the screen, which is not possible with the two degrees of freedom computer mouse. The space navigator allows him to move and rotate the data set for a finer degree of control. We provide the ability to turn on and off any component easily to minimize visual clutter without sacrificing contextual information. Here, the user turns on the contextual flow to view how the streamlines surrounding the blades interact with the streamlines he had seeded with the Phantom Omni device. Now he turns off all other components to focus his inspection on the contextual flow. Next, he inspects the relationship between the contextual flow and the turbine blades by turning on the blade geometry. The vertical structures can be colored by any scalar field provided in the given data set. Here, the vortices are colored by relative velocity magnitude. For this data set, the vortices can also be colored by pressure, kinetic energy, vorticity, and the computed winding angle. Our workbench allows the user to observe structural changes to the fluid flow by stepping through a UI time slider. Here, the user is interested in the tiny vortex appearing at the inner edge of the turbine blade. Using the space navigator, he easily navigates to the desired viewpoint and continues stepping through the time steps via the time slider. He turns off the turbine blade geometry to get a better view of the surrounding flow structures and continues his observation. The user also has the option of analyzing the timeline ribbon summary using the head tracker, stereo glasses, and space navigator. 